All right, students, welcome to the second video in the 4.3 wave characteristics topic. In this video, I'm going to talk about something called the superposition principle, uh, which involves how uh, waves can interfere with one another. And then I'll talk about what we term constructive and destructive interference. All of these are terms that you may be familiar with previously, but I'm going to sort of um, nail exactly what you need to know in terms of the IB curriculum. Okay. Now, imagine if you have two waves traveling along a medium towards one another. Okay. What exactly happens as they go through one another? Because remember, waves can go through one another because waves are nothing more than the transport of energy through a medium. So energy can pass through, one pulse of energy can pass through another pulse of energy. What they do is they go through one another as if the other were not even there, okay? Now, if you look at this really cool wave generator here, this is a bunch of metal bars on a, on a thin wire right down the center. So we can, we can, um, we can give wave pulses from either end, and you can see what happens when the waves meet in the middle is these two waves pass right through that one big wave as if the other wave was not even there. Okay, And that's an important, very, very important consideration when we talk about how waves interact and what, um, what happens physically in the real world. Okay, Now, I want you to think about what would happen if you have two up pulses or positive displacements from opposite ends or if there are two down pulses from opposite ends, okay? You probably, your common sense might tell you um, what's going to happen. I'll show you in the next, um, in the next slide what's going to happen. Alternatively, what if you have one up pulse, one positive displacement, and one negative displacement from opposite ends that are coming towards each other, okay? Now, if there are two up or down pulses, they make one big wave right in the middle. That is to say they add up to basically create a wave that has double the amplitude or has the amplitude of each of the other waves um, summed together, okay? Now, if there's one, one up and one down, they make no wave at all, okay? So in the middle, think about it as a positive and negative being added together. If they're the same amplitude, if the wave on the left is as high as the wave on the right is low, then when they meet, they will cancel out perfectly. They interfere with one another, and for that instant, they cancel out, and if you sort of pause the video right at that instant, you can see that there is no wave at all. Now, Again, remember that the wave coming from the right continues to the left as if the one coming from the left to the right wasn't even there, okay? In other words, these waves interfere with each other, and that's what we're going to study in this part of the course, okay? And this, the way that they interfere is governed by something called the principle of superposition, and it states that when two or more waves meet at the same time in the same place, in the same medium, obviously, the resulting disturbance is the sum of the disturbances from the individual waves. And as you saw in the previous slide, whether we consider disturbances to be positive or negative, just think about positive and negative displacement, is crucial in determining exactly what happens. Now, all waves interfere according to this principle. Remember when we talked about all waves are able to refract? All waves interfere according to this principle. So, you know, you can think about it as even maybe a defining feature of waves, that they're able to interfere according to the principle of superposition and refract. So water, sound, light, etc. Okay? So, for example, if I have two waves as shown below, these are two displacement time graphs, two different waves, okay, with different frequencies. It looks like they have similar amplitudes, okay? Okay, on the blank axis here, you can easily draw the resulting wave when these two waves occupy the same part of the medium by applying the principle of superposition. So, let's just kind of go through um, point by point, and then maybe we'll sketch the wave together, and I'm calling this Y3, okay, because this is Y1, Y2, and Y3, okay? So, the first point, okay, Y, y1 plus y2 is 0 plus 0, so it's 0, okay? The next point, it looks like y, y1 is at 2, and y2 is at about 2.5, so that would be about 4.5, okay? So that's, that's a really high point, okay? That's what we call constructive interference, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, okay? The next point, which refers to right in here, okay? You can see that y, uh, y1 is... It looks like it's about two and a half, and y2 is zero, so two and a half plus zero is two and a half. We can proceed in this fashion all the way to trace out the resulting wave, and if we draw a nice wave through the dots, this is the actual resulting wave, which would physically um, be a product, or be, be a sum of these two waves if they were to occupy the same space in the same medium at the same time. How cool is that, right? This is kind of fun, right? And it's very easy when you think about positives and negatives, okay? So again, wave three is simply wave one plus wave two according to the principle of superposition, okay? Now, it can get a little more complicated 
in terms of what kind of wave results. For example, we have wave 1 equals wave 2 plus wave 3. You should look at this diagram. This is from a Physics for the ID, IB Diploma book. Okay, um, You should be able to understand how wave 1, which is the really bold one here, is the sum, the superposition of waves 1 and 2. Okay, So kind of interesting here. Okay, So we see examples of this in nature all the time. Okay, so for example, if you throw two stones into a pond and you look at the how when the ripples um, overlap one another, you see a very nice what we call interference pattern. Okay, this is a computer simulation of the same thing. Okay, this is a 3D computer simulation of a wave, uh, maybe two 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 waves interacting. Notice the areas of of maximum displacement interference and the areas of minimum displacement. Okay, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Okay, so the first example in this video. Video. Um, you, you're going to need to spend a little bit of time on this one, okay? Um, so I have a diagram showing two wave pulses at time t equals zero, and you can see that the wave pulses are traveling towards each other at one meter per second, okay? The markings on the x-axis are one meter apart, okay? Draw a series of y-x graphs from one to six seconds at one second intervals to illustrate their superposition until they have crossed or pass through one another. So let me give you, let me just kind of walk you through this. This is kind of a, maybe a little bit of a confuse, uh, confusing example, okay? At t equals one, because they're moving one meter per second and each tick mark on the x-axis is one meter, okay? At one second, they're one block closer to one, one another. So they're separated by two blocks as shown in the first diagram. In the second one, they're just touching each other. In the third one, they're exactly over top of each other. So this results at three seconds is when you have the highest amplitude resulting wave according to the principle of superposition. At t equals four, they've just gone past each other. And t equals five, they're actually two meters apart. Okay, so you want to study that carefully. Make sure you understand that. Okay, continued. All right, consider the two, the two points P and Q marked on the diagram. I want you to draw a graph showing the displacement of point Q from 0 to 6 seconds and that of point P from 0 to 6 seconds, okay? So again, um, to aid you in this, what I've done is I've shown the, the, uh, my little diagrams from the previous slide, okay? Now, it turns out that, um, let's see, for point Q, okay, so point Q, you can see at one second is one block above, at two seconds it's one block above, um, but goes down at two, at three it's zero, right? There's zero amplitude because the entire wave is over here. And then four and five, it actually goes right back through point Q, okay? You can see from um, point P actually has a higher resultant wave according to the principle of superposition because P is right in the thick of things right when the triangle passes over top of the square, okay? All right, so um, if you need some clarification in class, we can certainly talk about this example. Usually students want to go more in depth on this one. And I just want to also note that um, waves as depicted in diagrams don't have to be nice and curvy. They can be block waves, they can be triangles, squares, and, and um, so forth, okay? Now I want to talk a little bit more about constructive and destructive interference, okay? So if a resulting wave is bigger, we say in physics that they uh, they interact constructively, so the, so the waves reinforce one another. So, like on a slinky, well, we could we can try this in class. You have two two um, waves that meet at the same have the, uh, the same positive or negative displacement. When they overlap, they'll make a really big wave, and then they just continue on afterwards as if the other wave were not even there. If the resulting wave is smaller, then we say in physics that these waves interact destructively. So the waves cancel each other out, okay? This is what we call perfect uh, destructive interference right here when there's absolutely no wave at all, okay? So again, construct constructive interference, the resultant has the maximum possible amplitude, and destructive, the resultant has zero amplitude for perfect destructive interference. And also, you sometimes hear the terms perfect constructive interference. You can have any any range of constructive and destructive interference depending on how the waves line up, okay? All right, we talked about phase differences. And just to remind you, um, this term out of phase refers to when the crests of two or more waves do not occupy the same place in the medium at the same time. So they don't line up. And the phase difference, which is given by phi, or the phase shift, is just how far apart the crests are, okay? So you've seen this example before. We'll walk through it again, okay? The wavelength here is eight units as measured on the x-axis, okay? 
This is a displacement distance graph, not a displacement time graph. Okay, So we say that the red wave and the blue wave are out of phase with a phase shift of about 1.5 units. As you can see, that's the distance between successive crests or successive troughs. Okay, Now, if they're perfectly out of phase or completely out of phase, the phase shift would be, you can see, one half of the wavelength. That's important for you to understand, okay? In this case, it would be four units. And the resulting wave, you can see here, every red peak lines up with a blue trough <clears throat> and vice versa. So the resulting wave would be zero amplitude. So there would still be energy in that medium, right? Definitely energy is moving through it, but you wouldn't know it just by looking at it because there's actually no displacement whatsoever in the resulting wave, okay? Okay, now when, um, <clears throat> when waves are in phase, the crests of two or more waves occupy the same place in the medium at the same time, and the waves line up, okay? So again, if we move the red wave over to the right, <clears throat> you can see the phase difference gets less and less. Here the phase difference, uh, the phase shift is zero units, okay, whoops, the phase shift was zero units when they're right on top of each other, and you can see that at that instant of time, we would have a wave that's actually the same frequency, same speed, everything else, right? but it's going to be twice as high as it was before. And I guess because um, blue and red make purple, um, it'd be a purple wave, right? Okay. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to relate this back to radians, which we've done so uh, a little bit previously. At this point in your uh, educational career, and certainly in this class, you should be very familiar with these two diagrams, okay? And this is a diagram that I presented to you the very first week of school um, last year, okay? Um, about, about sine and cosine graphs and how the difference between sine and cosine is merely where they start off, right? So you should know by now from your math class that the sine and the cosine have a phase shift. And what is that phase shift? It's pi over two radians, okay? <clears throat> now, perfect destructive interference, you can see, would have a phase shift of double that, which would be pi. If they're in phase, again, the phase shift would be zero radians, okay? So again, out of phase, in phase, perfect destructive interference, okay? And in phase, those are, those are terms that you need to be familiar with, okay? All right, and there's a really great simulation which we'll play with in class, which you can, um, <clears throat> you can look at here. You have two waves. You have, a, again, a, a red wave and a blue wave. The green wave is the resulting wave according to the principle of superposition, okay? And what you can do is you can actually change the phase shift, okay, in radians in this particular um, demonstration, and you can just play around and see how the resultant green wave would change if you change the phase shift y1 and y2, okay? Now, you can also play around with the amplitudes, as I'm doing here. It's kind of cool, right? You can also play around with the frequency. The frequency just makes more or less uh, waves, um, crests and troughs, as seen horizontally. Really cool, uh, really cool demonstration here, and we'll play with this a little bit in class, all right? <clears throat>